Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and in this video and the next I'm going to be looking at an unsung part of Cubase which harks back to its origins as a MIDI sequencer and that's the logical editor. One of the things that uh, was a feature of early MIDI sequencers was the grid list where every event was listed in um, a table and you could go in and alter those individual notes. That very quickly became superseded by the key editor that's the more common editor in use today where you have the keyboard down the side of the screen. The problem with both the key editor and the grid editor was that you could only deal with one note at a time and if you had a particular action that you wanted to repeat across your entire MIDI track, you had to go in and do it manually. The purpose of the logical editor is to allow you to set up criteria that you can then apply to the whole track in a single stroke rather than having to go in and edit every single note that you want to amend. That's the basis of the logical editor. It's one of the few times where I really would recommend reading the manual. But if you can't bring yourself to read the manual, the logical editor in Cubase comes with a lot of presets that give you some idea of the power that it offers to you in terms of editing. So where is it? Well, because it deals with MIDI, it's on the MIDI menu. But frustratingly, you go there and it's greyed out. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because the logical editor works with the parts that you've selected and as I've got no part selected, it won't activate. But if I select the bass channel, then we go back to the MIDI editor and lo and behold, the logical editor is now available to us. So we open that up and what this has is one of the presets loaded. We'll actually come back to this preset, but let's have a look see at what we've got. We've got a whole bunch of different presets that give you some idea of the range of things that you can do. For example here we've got kill notes on C major so any white notes on a piano keyboard are going to get erased. Um, another thing we've got is transform notes after D sharp 3 or C sharp 3 in some way. What we've got here is that notes after D sharp 3 and C sharp 3 um, are set to the fixed value of D3. So what this is, is doing is taking these notes and fixing them all at D3. Why you would want to do that? I don't know off the top of my head, but there you go. There's some interesting ones in the musical context. Add minor sevenths to chords with three or more voices. So this is capable of adding extra notes in. So if you've played in a simple three note chord part, you can then start to add notes ninths to chords. Delete the fifths. Extract alto is an interesting one. Here it's saying that it's context variable. So it's not necessarily looking at a particular either just at the note or at a controller code what it's saying is it's taking the voice of the chord so say you drag down a set of chords from up here you can extract the alto part and because it's an extract function what that will do is it will take the, the alto note from the chord voice and create a new MIDI channel with that note on it that's fine, but if you have a look at your options, you've also got soprano, tenor and bass. And it will also create extra tracks depending on whether you've got four or more notes available in the part. So say you've got a series of four note chords running through a song. What this enables you to do is to go into that part and have it Cubase automatically extract the highest note to create a soprano part, 
the next note down to create an alto, tenor, bass, etc. You could then voice those violin, viola, cello and double bass to create a string quartet. You could use brass parts, you could go trumpet, trumpet, saxophone, trombone to create a fake brass section. You've then got the voices and the notes, you can then go in and start to amend them to create more interesting parts than simply the block chords. So there are quite some things here to enable you to play some chords in very quickly, revoice them out across different channels and apply different voices to them to make your music more harmonically interesting and use different timbres to give yourself that more interesting sound. Note expression, there's all sorts of here. Remove all MIDI data, remove invalid VST3 parameters. So depending on what you've recorded, you can go in and amend it. Um, standard set harks back to the original logical editor set that I was using back in Cubase 3 on the Atari. Fixed velocities, half tempos, random notes, random velocities. And in a future video, we'll look at some of the uses of these. But in the meantime, I'm going to go back to that one in the musical context of transpose the lowest pitches. And what this is doing is it's saying take the lowest pitch in the part and any note within four notes of it and add 12 to it. Now the lowest pitch, if you actually go into the manual, there's a helpful table here that shows you what the values of parameter 1 and parameter 2 are depending on the event type and it goes to VST3 events. Primarily you'll be dealing with notes unless you're really into amending your MIDI data, your controller data. So note number and pitch and velocity. We go back here so anything that's the lowest pitch will get 12 added to it and it's a transform function. It's worth down here having a look at these. You can have functions that will delete, transform, insert, copy, extract or just simply select so that you can say right find me all the notes that are within this range and select them and then you can go in and amend. We're going to leave that on transform. I'm just going to pull this down so you can see the bass part there and as I click apply you'll be able to see these lowest notes go flying up an octave. So there you go. That's now amended our bass part by transposing the lowest notes up an octave. And we'll just have a quick listen to that and you can hear what it sounds like now. And from there you can go in and edit it further if you choose. It's an example of how you can use the logical editor to make sweeping changes to your MIDI parts rather than having to go in and manually edit every single note. And a point to bear in mind, when you use the logical editor it only alters what you've asked it to use. So if you've got a part that's got a good groove and your notes aren't sitting smack bang on the grid it will not alter that groove. It will simply alter the values you ask it to alter. Whereas manually altering the position of a note, you can end up with it snapping onto the grid if you're not careful and you lose the feel that you've worked so hard in the recording phase to capture. That's it. I hope that uh, has whetted your appetite for having a look at the Logical Editor. And until next time, you take care of yourselves.